Ladies and gentlemen, I'm back again with another video. So in this video, I'm going to discuss should you pursue high ticket closing slash remote closing or should you look for an appointment setting position? That's what we're going to discuss. So let's go in my computer so you guys can see what we're going to be discussing about in today's video. All right, so here we are. So the main thing here is I want you guys to get the introduction first and understanding in this entire thing right here. And then why should you even get into this? and like the upside and the downside of remote closing and appointment settings. So I'm gonna break it down for you guys because that's the most common questions I've been getting on the comments, messages and stuff like that. So I've got like hundreds of questions about this. So let's get started, let's dive right into it right now. So first, I want you guys to understand this entire, you know, flow right here, chart flow, whatever you guys wanna call it. So first things first, so this entire position depends on the offer, the service or the product, right? Majority of these things that we're selling or we're working with these coaches, these programs, these agencies, we're looking to get into the ones that is high ticket. So meaning products that could range from 5,000, you know, 5,000 all the way to you know, 20,000, depending on which services, which industry you're in, right? So the services and industries and product, you know, industry wise, you could be looking at e-commerce, you could be in fitness, dating advices, um, you know, real estate, a lot of positions, a lot of industries, right? And all this depends, this is where it comes in, right? Because all these people have service, product, and offers, and they spend money, they they advertise it, and they generate leads for it from, you know, Facebook ads, TikTok ads, <clears throat> YouTube ads. So this is how they generate leads from these advertising platforms. And what this do is they generate interest from their offer anybody they're targeting you know other people is interested in it so they would get a lot of interest on that because they clicked or anything like that so now what happens is this where you can call them you know the leads because now they reach out to the people maybe they did like a call to action in the advertising you know hey i got a free pdf guide i have X, message me X, <clears throat> excuse me, message me X and I'm gonna send you over a free PDF guide and my exact framework on, you know, running ads, generating leads and, you know, real estate, how to get your dream desired girl, how to get six pack or anything like that. That's how they generate leads and call to action. So now that they've generated the interest, now their leads slash, you know, other words that you're going to be hearing about is prospect, it's the same thing as leads. Okay, let me just uh, make sure it's a consistent process. Why is it not letting me do caps? Pro prospects, there you go. So leads, prospects, um, you could, some people call it inbound lead, you know, inbound meaning like they got into your funnel. So it's like a funnel, right? So meaning like the advertising and then the, the interest, the messaging, and then them booking the call. So inbound lead is meaning they got into it. It's not, we didn't go out our way to message them. It means they got into, it's pretty much like a, someone hit you up on your message and DM, someone's trying to hit you, hit on you, right? So that's what it means, you know, you get their request, you see inbound. That's how we would call it inbound. Then, you know, sometimes they would call it outbound leads, meaning you're that one who reached out to them. You did a cold DM somewhere, right? You did a cold DM like to this cute girl you were messaging and then that's called outbound in the business realm. And now, you know, we're doing, this is where, um, since we have this, the first touch point that what happens is that people needs is, you know, remote closing. Maybe I, I have to change the, um, these, um, entire thing, <laughs> the name of the title. I might do like, um, what is remote closing or yeah, maybe I do what is remote closing or appointment setting. That's more better because I'm explaining to you guys 
this entire thing. So this is the basic understanding you guys need to have to get a full understanding on why they need remote closers or appointment setters. So now the let's do bl so blue one. This is the um, where the appointment setter is needed. So this one they need to engage, right? The one who's booking appointments, that's still blue. The appointment setters will be engaging in that. And the sales calls, whoever's gonna conducting that will be the closers. And close deal, add in CRM, that would still be, um, you know, that's, that's the closer's responsibility. And follow-ups, rebook a call, that is the appointment setter's you know, responsibility. It still depends. It could be blue or green, depending on which company you get placed into. Diff every company has different rules. Maybe they require the closers themselves to follow up on the prospect that they happen to call with, or it could be passed on to the appointment setter's responsibilities. It really depends here, but most of the time I've seen, you know, it's either or. It's 50-50, so I... You know, it depends on the um, appointment, you know, the company that you're working with. So, you know, booking appointments, meaning, you know, this is where you're in someone else's inboxes. You know, you're, why does it do, does that blue thing? All right, fuck it. Um, so, you know, this is where the appointment setter comes in. There is someone in someone else's inboxes. So all these, you know, um, the offer service product, the main person who's the owner of the um the the company they have a facebook they have a facebook profile they have an instagram profile that a lot of people are messaging right so you're in the inbox and you're the one who's you know doing the appointment setting pretty much you're messaging them you're you're getting them into a book appointment in the closers calendar so you know inbox you're in their dms and all that stuff so um, that's the main thing. And then now sales calls is this is where the magic happens this is where you make the, the money. That's why closer is very important because it's a specific skill. It's you talking to the person and you, you know, qualifying them and making sure that they're a right fit. You're the gatekeeper of the program because majority of these programs relies on testimonials and they rely on their company's integrity. And if our main responsibility is only bringing people who are, you know, will be a right fit to work with us that we can actually bring results. That's why we're the first touch point. That's our main responsibility is qualify them, you know, qual I don't know why my caps lock is not working, but qualify the prospect, you know, bring them in and all that good stuff and ask questions. And the, typically too, this is where you you collect payments. Now, after this, that's where you close the deal or you know, then they get into the program and then now you're handing them over to the owner, the whoever is doing the, um, the coaching, whoever is doing the service fulfillment. You don't have to worry about service fulfillment or anything like that, which is the upside actually of remote closing and appointment setting. Then the follow-ups, or either if you don't book them, right? If you don't close the deal, you could do a follow-up call and all that stuff. Or then now you add them to your CRM, your customer relation management. So everybody uses different softwares, tracking sheets and all this stuff to actually make sure they can still get a chance to close them. Now you do a follow-up to rebook a call for them. And this is where you try to close them again. And then typically this is the last time you would talk to this person because most of the time, like, why would they even hop on the call if they're not interested anymore, right? So, but, you know, it depends too. Sometimes in sales calls, they do one sales call and then that's it. Um, uh, personally, for me, I'm a hard closer. Like I convince them, yo, if we can, if you 100% believe I can help them out, I'm like, yo, why are you not taking action right now? Like, why, why, why delay? What, what's the point of delaying it, right? So it depends, it depends. Some people don't want to be too pushy, you know, that's where the follow-up call comes in. Maybe there are some certain pro prospects where they they need to actually generally just need to talk to to it about their business partner, their business, you know, their their partner in general, right? So that's where the rebooking a call comes into play. 
And now let's talk about appointment setting and high ticket closing. So who is it? Who is appointment setting for? So this is, I would say people who has no experience, um, no experience and you know, they don't like talking to people one-on-one -on -one or just in a face value or, uh, you know, like, um, just want to work behind the scenes. So behind the scenes, you know, they want to just be in the messaging. They don't want to really talk, open their camera and stuff like that. Then this is the right fit for you. And also you're looking for doing this part-time, you know, part-time. I don't really want to do full-time on this. I'm still in college. I'm still going to school. So that's what you're doing, right? So who that's, who is it for now? What are the downsides of, you know, appointment setting? So the downsides of appointment setting is, you know, the things that I, it comes into mind for me is your cap, your capped earning potential. Sure, they say it's not capped, right? But realistically, you only have so much time in your hand. Depends on the offer you're in, right? So if you're in the range of 10, 20K packages, sure, you could make like, I don't know, 8K, 8K a week or like 8K a month, 8 to 10K a month. There's I've seen setters who's done that crazy numbers before, but on average, you know, your commission is on 5% with base pay. Max wise, you're looking at making about three to six K with this a month. That's like what I've seen and I've noticed the average. I could be wrong. You know, um, I honestly totally skipped appointment setting right off the bat since I had past experience before and just went straight to high ticket closing. So that's like, I would say the downside on it, right? And what else would be the downside? Um, that's what I could think of right now, but and then what else i mean what's the upside let's talk about the upside i mean i guess we kind of talk about it right now here is behind the scene you don't have to do it full time you could do it part time um you could do it anywhere like you could literally be in a different country you could still message people back and forth there's no need you know no experience needed no degree needed to get into this so that's you know why is it so good to be a appointment setter I know someone is making, you know, 20, 30K a month as a setter, which is kind of insane. So those ones are like, the, he's the only appointment setter in this company and they're bringing an insane amount of people. So if you can land a job or a, like a setter position, you could get paid really well. Um, so who is it? So let's talk about how to get closing now. So who is it for, you know, uh, upside downside? Who is it for? These are the people with... I would say experience in, in sales, experience in sales, they've been in sales before in any other area, and they're looking to increase their earning potential, right? They're, they've had past experience in sales, maybe they've done door to door before, but it just feel like it's cap. They're not locationally free. So they want to get into, you know, somewhere where they could work anywhere, work from home. So this is where it comes in, they transition from their past experience and now on just being a high ticket closer of course sure all of uh, it's still different even if you did door to door the framework is somewhat different you doing you know low tickets offers is different because it's, you're pitching something much more higher value and you know you're talking to different industries different avatars of customers so there's some different things that you need to consider as well but yeah experience wise their experience you know they're looking for something remote they're looking to go full time on this and something like that. For sure you could do part time, but most of the time, if you're really trying to make the big bucks, you would go full time. Um, but for me right now, you know, I have two offers I'm closing for, so I'm technically full time for both of them, but you know, I make sure that I have time for both of them because if you want to get to like eight calls per day, you would want to have two offers running, you know, you're closing for. So what's the upside? I mean, it's uncapped, to be honest, it's uncapped. You could make as much as you can, you know, you know, like you could make between 30, 50 K per month on, on a really good offer. 
and the only i guess there's cap i mean because we we only we're still exchanging time for money so i'd say downside still exchanging time for money you know exchanging time for money but at this point forward you know you're now in a vehicle where instead of earning let's say a hundred dollars you know two hundred dollars per hour you're now in a position where you hop on a one hour phone call and you could you can close five hundred dollars six hundred dollars on commission so now your time opportunity cost you know it's so much more efficient you know you're you're getting more out of your time so so much more better you know an average job there's you know another upside in this is you know no experience I mean, experience is needed but no degrees needed to get into this you could literally make someone else's paycheck who has a four-year degree they've gone through like you know <laughs> like really good schools and stuff like that so you don't need any degree on this and then this is like this people actually for people who's looking to stack cash too i mean downside is you're still exchanging time for money um there's a lot of crappy offers there little like a shit offers so bad offers so you could get into offers where it's really bad and then you get barely any leads and stuff like that so make sure i'm gonna also create a video where which how do you once you hop on these calls on these people with offers certain questions you need to ask for them to actually consider if we can get into it but the beginning of course you're trying to gain experience I would just highly suggest get into any offer that you could get into on your head. And in this way, eventually in the next position that you get into, you get, you know, a leverage. Okay, I've closed for this X company. I've done X sales. So now you have leverage. People will want to work with you now because they know you can close deals. So that's pretty much it. Um, you know, what? that's what is remote closing and appointment setting. I hope you guys found something valuable into this, you know, this entire thing. If you still need any help or anything like that, let me know, you know, give me any video recommendations that you guys are wanting. I'm gonna do a day in your life. A lot of you guys were asking like, what's your day structure looking like right now? Um, I'm going to post that eventually. Bob, this is valuable. Once again, I appreciate you guys time. That's one of the most valuable things that you guys can give me. So you guys watching this video, I appreciate you guys on, you know, just watching this video with me and just me explaining on what this is. So I hope you guys find something valuable. But again, I wanna leave you guys with this same thing every single video I do is, be a creator, not a consumer, create something today that will inspire you and others. Peace.